All right, so I'm going to do this here little update. I'm going to tell the story of what I think was going on and all this stuff that happened. So when the fire happened, I wasn't there. So when I get home, I notice that the fire trucks are outside. Now, fires, they're always getting called. So, like, it doesn't surprise me that a fire truck's there. I didn't think nothing of it. So, go inside the building, go get in the elevator, go upstairs to the fifth floor, go towards my room. That's when I noticed that my, you know, my my door's open. And I'm like, walk in. And I go to walk in, then I see, you know, all the black stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? And like, yeah, it caught fire. I'm like, yeah, obviously. I'm like, do you guys have any idea why? Well, it looks like a plug. You know, fault to plug. I looked over, but on the TV, sure enough, there's a faulty plug back there, which you can see in these videos. So, that tells you right there, and not only that, they busted out where the, um, where the sprinkler was, because it wouldn't stop. Um, and then flooded the place really bad. So, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, you know, I'm trying to process everything. So the first thing you know I do is I call my caseworker. And uh when she talks to me, I think she comes up there too. Um tells me to hide my weed pipe. Like what well, a weed pipe isn't gonna catch an apartment on fire. <laughs> I'm like, oh I'm not worried about it, you know. Um so I'm sitting around I'm like thinking about what I can do, um, you know, what the next step is because I done lost everything, you know, everything looks damaged, everything looks ruined. And I'm like, well, I'm like, I don't really know what to do, you know? And my phone rings, and it's Red Cross. And I'm like, hello, you know what I'm talking to them? They're like, oh, this is Red Cross, and we're looking for support, see if we could give you support. And I want to say that my caseworker called them, but I don't know, it's weird. Um, so this person was asking me, um, you know, well, I need to talk to, I can't remember what, what all she was saying, you know, just asking me about stuff, and you know, and then it's like, well, I need to call the property manager and, you know, ask him a couple questions and see, see, you know, um, what the cause of the fire was and, uh, you know, if the apartment is livable. And, you know, she calls me back a little, a little bit later and she's like, yeah, so the apartment, um, He's saying that the apartment is livable, so we can't give you any assistance. And I'm like, yeah, it's totally not livable. Um, so, I didn't think nothing of it. I just wasn't going to get help from Red Cross, right? So, I kind of, you know, just forget about that. And I go on, you know. So, as I'm trying to process everything, the property manager and the maintenance man all come in like trying to barge in and they're like we got to do restoration i'm like not fucking right now i got to get in there and you know and go, go through my stuff so you know see what's all been damaged if you know there's anything that you know hasn't been damaged uh maybe get my clothes and you know wash them or something clean up you know like a little bit they didn't help me do anything they didn't touch the room so like but i told them not to touch the room until you know I looked at everything. So he's like, when are you going to, when are you, you know, when, when can we come in here? How long do you need? I'm like, well, you know, I'd like to have a fucking, at least a whole day, you know? He's like, and it's already like five o'clock. He's like, so tomorrow morning? I'm like, yeah, sure, fine. You know, tomorrow morning. Like, the dude's being an asshole and I'm like, this, this isn't my fault. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, why is he being such a fucking asshole and why are they fucking being like this? And, you know, the caseworkers, I would think, you know, I would think my caseworker would, you know, get some, some type of resources lined out or maybe get me into another apartment. Nothing. She takes the day off, the next day off. You know, then complains about that I text her on her day off. Like, motherfucker, I just lost everything I had. So, I found out so much stuff about, you know, all of this as I'm researching stuff that... I uncovered this huge can of worms and it's just opened up a whole bunch of shit. So, you know, I mean, I stay in the room that day and that night and I'm like, well, I guess I got to sleep in here. And so I clean off the kitchen, little kitchen area floor and I lay down um, the shower curtain and I put my blankets on top of it. 
the blankets that I could possibly find that were dry. I had to use my sleeping bag because it was in my um, backpack so it didn't get wet. Because uh, a backpack, backpack is water resistant, so it water, you can spray it with water hose, it's not going to hurt it. So, you know, I spend most of the night going through my stuff, you know, taking my computer stuff apart, um, washing my clothes, you know, just trying to clean up, you know, like my personal items and whatnot. And I'm thinking, like, these motherfuckers really got me fucking in here and didn't even offer me another room. And there's an empty room right beside me, and there's another one across the hall. So I'm like, well, that's fucked up, you know? So the next day at, like, 8 o'clock, this motherfucker shot up just busting my room. Don't knock, nothing. Just try to open it. But I had already barricaded my door with um, my skateboard, so they couldn't do that. And uh, so I'm like, if you come through this door, you're getting hit, you know? And... Next thing I know, property manager and a bunch of other people are coming up there and they're like, we need to get in here. And I'm like, you can wait a goddamn minute. Let me pack my stuff. It's eight fucking o'clock. You didn't, you guys didn't tell me, a, you know, a time or anything. Um, give me a minute to get my goddamn shit together. Like, I just lost everything that I fucking owned and I'm not getting any help. You know, so I was pretty pissed. So it goes, you know, the, the, so I get my stuff and I leave. And I'm gone for most of the day, you know, um, because I figured they need time to do all this stuff. You know, they're going to be in there working all day. So, you know, I stay gone all day and they never text me. They never, you know, call me or anything. I try to call the property manager to see what time I would come back. And I couldn't get a hold of him. He wasn't there or something. So this is only the next day, right? And I've still got no help, um, you know, any, for anything. And then I'm made to go stand outside. Or not stand outside, but, you know, go leave and... I don't know when to come back, you know, but I came back at about five. And when I got back, they had did absolutely nothing other than put those fans in there and that day he made a fire. That's all they did. So they kicked me out at eight o'clock in the morning to do that, to only do that. Throughout all of this stuff happening, I'm having stuff come up and missing and it's not happening all at once. It's happening over time. Like... And a lot of the stuff was like my paperwork and stuff. And whenever I mentioned that to my caseworker, and she was like, well, it's not like we don't, we don't already have that information. And, but when she said it, it was weird. Like, it was odd how she said it. Like, we, we, we wouldn't need that, you know? We already have all that information. Well, you know, it, it kind of hit me wrong. So I'm sitting back and I'm thinking, well, dang, you know? It's, so we go on day two that I'm staying in there, you know? And then they just left the fans on the dehumidifier. So I'm just supposed to stay in here in this wet soaked room and with this equipment running? Like, what the fuck? What did I do? Like, and they're telling me that in order to like, to go further, to do anything, they're waiting on a fire report, right? There ain't no goddamn fire report. There's no such thing as a fire report. What they were meaning was like the cause of the fire or whatever, but, and they know this, the fire department, did not make a fucking report about this. So there's not a report made. So when they were telling me for three or four days they were waiting on the fire report, they were lying to me. Now I know why they, why they were lying to me. And this is also my caseworker, the person who's on here on my YouTube. And I know that like her, maybe her classmates or something or people that she's in the intern with. Or I don't fucking know. But there's other people from her class or something she brought in here. She was saying this to me too. So, I mean... She was part of it. She was straight up lying to me. And I thought she was a cool chick, you know, at first. And even trying to help her out, you know. I But I gave everybody that option to get out of this before she hits the fan. Um, just because I'm a good person. But they all, like, refused. Except for um, the guy out in San Mateo. He actually told me a lot of shit uh, that I didn't know. And I was like, holy fuck, dude. Um, thank you for that information. Uh, that helps me. <laughs> um, but I was like, I was talking to him. I was like, I don't think you're going to be part of this because you work at a whole different branch. She's in a whole other county. So I was like, I don't think, you know, you, you can be held accountable in any way, shape, or form. But everybody else is. My caseworkers and everything. Everybody who's involved in my case is responsible for this. Um, you know, the bites and the skin infection and the stuff on my back that I was going to the hospital for multiple, multiple times in the MRSA, Whatever that room, that room was causing it. I know this because now, that's, this is the, where that big bad spot was. It's, I mean, it's all healed up. And it's never healed up this good before. 
Um, there's no bites over my body and like that skin infection stuff. It's, it's all gone. It's I'm, it's like I'm, I'm fine now. And that that pretty much proves that that room was making me sick. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning all this as I go. You know, I'm kind of putting all this stuff together and I'm like, damn. So the first thing I do is I go to the fire department because I want to hurry up and get this fire report. Now, somebody, I can't remember who it was, said that the property manager already had it. So I don't know who the first person I talked to was, but he was like, you have to give me an email and then all this other stuff. He was lying. I don't know. that The, the first guy I talked to was fucking totally lying, and he probably knows about how they cover stuff up. The second guy I talked to went directly to it. He's like, you don't have to email. So they gave me a link, and I clicked on it, and then the link didn't work. And I don't know what they were doing, but... There's something really fishy going on with all of this. Um, and there's still some things that I can't figure out. Um, but check this out. So you remember the Red Cross worker that called me? That was not a Red Cross worker. Um, I don't know who it was, but when the Red Cross gets in contact, or when you call the Red Cross, because the Red Cross don't call you, um, they, have, they make um, like... They make a record of that. So if somebody was to even call on my behalf, they would make a record of that. They would make a record of the address. They would make a record of property manager. You know, all this would be on file and their notes. I called them, and this is just this past week. Um, it was probably like, like Tuesday or Wednesday or something. And the reason I called them was I wanted to know the reason that they wouldn't help me because I didn't get no help from the program or the VA. I wanted to know why they couldn't help me and if it was something caused by them. Yeah, it was. It was definitely caused by them. And I didn't think about what was going on at first or, and why. Like, I was like, why would they have a fake VA person or a fake Red Cross person call me? And like, that doesn't make any sense, right? Oh, yeah, it does make sense. They didn't want a paper trail. So if I would have reached out myself to the Red Cross... That would have made a paper trail. I would have got help. Then that would have said my fire, you know, they would have been looking for like, you know, a report. Because in order for them to do anything, they have to have like some kind of report to go off of. And there was no report. So it's like the fire never happened. Um, so I went to go check, and you can check this online. It's all public information about, you know, fires that had been there at Relton Place. And they're missing a lot because I know because I live there and how many times the fire department showed up. So they're covering it up and they're saying, you know, and they're not jotting them down. Um, I'm pretty sure my caseworker knows this. She knows about the stuff that was, well, she's not my caseworker anymore. Um, she won't even talk to me anymore, even though she's supposed to talk to me after the program, I follow up. Um, that's what she told me. Um, but <laughs> I now see that she's a liar just like them. Um, and all these people are lying. Um, you know, the the director at the VA place, he offered me today. I um, I called him today because he said he called me and left a voicemail, but there's nothing on my phone. No voicemail, nothing. Like, no missed calls, nothing. Um, he offered me to get back into that program and go back to that place today. He said, I think I can, I can get you back in there and everything. So, like... And this whole time, nobody mentions anything about my property that's all destroyed because they don't want to pay it. So I'm starting to figure out what the fuck they're doing. So throughout all this, Jorge slips up and tells me that they've had my VA voucher since last March. When I first talked to him, and he was like, trying to, he was telling me, oh, I'm going to get you into another apartment, you know, today, blah, 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 blah. He never talked to me again. He didn't talk to me for 10 fucking days. He never called me. Things like this are happening. I'm like, what the fuck? Why are they doing this? So I knew something was fishy, and then, like, slowly, I just started to unravel shit, dude. So when I called the fire department, you know, the second time, this guy, you know, he he, was, he found out. You know, he was saying stuff like, what? He's like, well, I'm looking for this date, man. You know, and on this date, there was a call made, but it was to 244 Turk, not 224, or 242, which would be, like, across the street or something, or, like, right down the road. He's like, but 
and I'm like, well, what, what happened there? He's like, 